In this video, I'm gonna share with you what I have learned after one year of open blade shaving, 204 open blade shaves, stay tuned. Hey there folks, welcome back for another video. I'm your host CDB and thanks so much for joining me for this special edition video because today I'm going to talk to you about what I've learned after doing one year of regular straight and shavette shaves, that's open blade shaving, 204 open blade shaves from the 21st of April last year to the 21st of April this year. I just want to share some, some thoughts on that experience and what it's been like and maybe in one of the corners I'll put up a uh, the video, the first video I did last year when I started this journey out. This is not the first time I've ever straight razor shaved. I did it back in 2013 and 2014 some, but in 2020, I really took it on regularly and I did, you know, like I said, 204 open blade shaves. I think that was 165 or so straight shaves and maybe 39 or so um, uh, shavette shaves. So we'll talk about that. The gear for today, it's only fitting that I use the Wade and Butcher for Gentleman's Use. That was a gift from the Stallion. This is a magnificent razor from the 1800s. Really beautiful and a treasured gift. And I'm going to use uh, the soap for today. Big Dude Barbas, one of the most supportive people, uh, or at least very supportive of my channel. And I really appreciate him. So I wanted to, to use the soap today to honor Big Dude uh, Barbas. Really nice soap. And I looked on his website and I think he only has one of these active soaps left. This is a nice uh, cologne sort of smelling uh, scent. The texture on this or the consistency is hard. It's almost like a putty. It's kind of hard to, to press down. So I imagine you get a fair amount of mileage for this. The ingredients, the cost and all that, I'm not gonna get into today because I just really wanna talk about the open blade uh, journey over the last year. So that said, let's go ahead and uh, miss the face. We have our standard 24 hours of growth and we'll try not to open up that bump there, but no guarantees, of course. And we start with misting the face, and we have our barbers lathered up in our Captain's Choice bowl. And the brush for today is the Wolf Whiskers with the TSC handle. That's me, traditional shaving evangelist, or my first channel. All right, let's apply our barbers, and we got a lot of hydration in this today. The barbers, by the way, is a nice, uh, easy going soap that lathers easily and, and uh, well. Easy to work with and I really enjoy it. It's got a really nice, clean, fresh cologne type scent as well, the active. So first thing I want to sort of get across to you, if you are new to open blade shaving, that is straight razor or chevettes. When you first start out straight razor shaving, you don't know what a good edge is. I'm just gonna tell you, uh, if you're coming from DE shaving or especially carp shaving, it's not going to feel the same. It might feel a little bit tuggy. It might feel a little bit different. And part of that is because you've got close to three inches of blade on your face versus what, an inch and a half or something? Inch and three quarters, maybe using the DE razor. So it's gonna feel different right out of the gate. So please experiment with edges early on and don't assume the first edge you try, when you, when you hit that feeling of resistance and you go, oh, it's tuggy, it may not be tuggy. It's perhaps that you really don't know what a good edge is. So I suggest that you try Lots of edges, and it will take a good probably 40 shaves, maybe even more, before you even know sort of what you like in terms of edges. Uh, and that's the first thing to get across, because it's very, very common for a new person to go, oh, this edge is tuggy. In my first shave last year, which hopefully I'm rolling in one of the corners, I said in that video, this edge is tuggy. It may have been, but chances are, I just was unfamiliar with the feeling of that razor and it feels entirely different when you're using a straight razor. It's a, especially if you're coming from machined edge. So machined edge made by machines, very thin, very, very sharp. And straight razors usually don't get to that level. So it's going to feel different. So that's the first thing I'd like to, to sort of pass on to you and something that I've learned. The second thing is stay shallow with your angle. Stay shallow with your angle. And we bring the straight razor shave uh, in. And one, another tip that I'll give you was given to me by, by Doug Bear. If you're having problems figuring out where to start, sort of point, point the razor like that and then angle it in and you'll be able to see better where your starting point is. And then you just get some nice and easy strokes. And by keeping the angle shallow, I mean keeping keep it in closer to your face. You might have to rotate it out a bit to get to that effective cutting angle, but generally 
try to stay shallow. The general recommendation is one spine width, and the spine is this, one spine width off your face, generally speaking. And, you, and again, you may have to experiment with that. So, and I'm hoping not to open that bump up, but again, no promises, because we're using a straight today, so it's, it's not quite as easy to go around things. That's one of the things that you will certainly notice about uh, straight razor shaving. Um, the blade being long, you're gonna have some limitations there on what you can do with it. And D, you can pretty much whip around any old kind of way and get in some very tight spots. A straight razor, you are limited a little bit, so keep that in mind. Uh, number three, the third thing I'd like to pass on to you, you need hydration in your lather and likely more than you would with a DE. Why is that? Because it takes a little bit longer to do your passes with the straight. So sometimes, what happened to me when I first started is I had a tendency to make a, a lather that was sort of pasty. And by the time I got to this side, this lather was drying out. And you don't want that lather drying out. What happens with lather is, and you can make a lather and put it in a bowl and test this out. The water, you'll sort of lose hydration as time goes on. So you can make a lather on your face and if it's sitting there for four or five minutes, it starts to lose its moisture. Again, make a lather, put it in a bowl and walk away for a time and come back and you'll see it's lost some of its moisture. So I changed the way I lather to incorporate more moisture into my mix so it would stay hydrated. Hydration is the key to slickness and you do need it. You do need it. Um, the next thing I would uh, caution you about is Stretching, which I'm doing right now with this hand, I'm sort of pulling down just slightly and I'm also moving my head in this direction. Stretching is important and it's often overlooked, but more important than just stretching is effective stretching. So in other words, just mindlessly pulling and stretching with no rhyme or reason is not necessarily the ticket with straight rate of shaving. You have to see what the effect of your stretching is because in some places when you stretch you create a hollow as I've shown you many times on the channel before and of course that was taught to me by uh, Maddie Lindholm you pull in certain areas like there you put your fingers in certain places see right there it creates a hollow that makes it hard to get to so practice your stretching in the mirror and see where it's effective see where it's really flattening that skin because that's really the goal of the stretching is to flatten that skin so you can get to it and also when you're stretching is to keep that skin rolling, keep it from, as you're moving the blade down, keep it from creating a roll and cutting yourself. That's the other purpose of stretching. So be mindful of your stretching. And I don't always do a great job of that, honestly, because I, I sort of develop habits and then I uh, sort of stay, <laughs> stay within those habits. The next thing that I would uh, caution you about is, look, you're gonna have a strop or you should have a strop when you shave. You will nick your strop if you're new. So please do not go and buy a Kaneyama $400 strop as your first strop. You will nick your strop. It's going to happen most likely. And buy an affordable strop as your first strop. Get accustomed to the movements of stropping. Be careful, take your time. It's not a race, it's not a sprint. Strop easily. And again, there are many, many videos on stropping that you can just Google how to strop a straight razor. You'll find many videos, but just just know that at some point in time, you're probably gonna nick your strop. And so if you have bought a four or $500 strop, that's gonna be very painful for you. So I recommend not buying a super expensive strop until you are accustomed to stropping and you develop a rhythm and you're very competent with your stropping. Because if you strop a, a strop that's, if, if you nick a strop that's, you know, 60, 70, 80 bucks, not too big a deal. But on a $400 strop, that's like, ooh, it's painful. So just be careful. And if you haven't nicked your strop, then congrats. You're one of the few that has not. But you can watch people's videos of experienced stroppers or experienced straight razor shavers who've been doing it for years. And you'll notice if you look at those strops, there's, there's nicks in them. There's spots where they've sanded them out. So even the greats nick their strops from time to time being careless. So my advice, don't go whole hog and buy a $400 drop right, right out of the gate. It's You're going to nick it and you're going to be very, very disappointed. Get yourself a nice 
budget level strop and get familiar with that. And then once familiar, if you want to move up and get a, you know, another level up, do that. And also you may not really enjoy straight razor shaving that much. And so you don't want to spend $400 on a strop right out of the gate. The next piece of advice I have for you is try many edges, including shavettes. And the reason I say that is the shavette is going to give you the feel of, a, of an edge that is as sharp as you can possibly get, especially the kismet blades and the weck. So when you have that edge, you can compare that level of sharpness and keeping in mind that straight razor edges really never quite get there in terms of sharpness, but it will give you a sort of benchmark in what's the upper threshold of sharpness. And it will also let you know, hey, you know, this is the way this feels with an uber sharp blade. And rotate some shavette shaves in and out. And I think you'll find that the thing that it also did for me was help me develop some finesse and a light touch. Because you must use a light touch with a shavette. Arguably, shavettes are harder to shave with because of those uber sharp blades. Um, some people love it, some people don't. But I recommend throwing in some shaves with shavettes as well. I think it helped me develop a, a lighter touch, which is absolutely key with straight razor shaving. We're not putting pressure here on the face. We're just stretching. And this blade is sharp enough that it will do the cutting without having to apply pressure. All I've got to do is hold it on my face. And if the soap is slick, it's going to allow the blade to glide. And I forgot about the bump there. Sorry about that if I open it up. Um, it will allow the blade to glide. And all you have to do is sort of hold it on your face. We're not applying much pressure. You do have to hold it on your face though. I mean, you're not, you can't just skim over your face with it and thinking it's a laser. <laughs> it might feel like a laser if it's sharp, but it's not. The, the blades that feel like a laser to me are uh, generally the the WEC blades, the uh, Kismet blades for WEC. Those feel like lasers to me, so I'd be mindful of that. The next thing is that I have learned, this is my opinion, this is an area of opinion, if the edge is sharp, it will cut. If the edge is sharp, it will cut. I hear a lot of people going, oh, I need a 7 eighths, 8 eighths, they need these massively large razors. And the heft might give you balance. It might sort of give you the feeling that it's helping in the cutting, but it's the edge ultimately that's doing the cutting. It's not the weight of the razor or the size of the razor. You'll see guys like Maddie Lindholm using 3 eighths razors, 4 eighths razors, very, very effectively. And so it's not really the size of the blade. You see these guys with the big cleavers and it's natural to assume maybe they're gonna cut better, but not necessarily. In fact, in some cases it can be a liability. You have all that extra blade size to worry about. It's hard to see over. Bottom line, if the edge is sharp, it will cut. And it's really that simple. And so you, you just have to learn to use the type of edges you have. And the best shavers out there can use pretty much anything. They can use a 3 ace. they can use uh, a shavette, they can use those big giant cleavers. And they will prove time and time again that as long as you have a good sharp edge, it will cut. So don't be one of these people that just assume you need a huge humongous razor or a particular grind. And that's another thing we'll, we'll get into. The grind is important to preference in my view, but once again, if the edge is sharp, it will cut. I don't prefer wedges because I don't really like the way they feel, but if you hone a sharp, hone a uh, wedge razor and it's honed properly, it will cut. Now, some people say, oh, I need a wedge um, because of my tough beard, but the same guys use DE razors and, and that blade and a DE razor is wafer thin. And so I don't know why they would need a wedge if they're using, <laughs> If they can use DE razors effectively, which are very thin, and, you know, the bottom line for me, what I'm getting at here is, regardless of grind, hollow, wedge, whatever, if it's a sharp edge, it'll cut. 
because I've seen a lot of people, again, once again, who say, oh, I must have a wedge. And the same guys are using DE razors too, which are wafer thin. And a lot of times those DE razors, the DE blades aren't held tightly in certain razors. And you'll see them using them and talking about how great the shave it is. Shave it is, and then when I get a straight razor, like, oh, I must have a wedge. The the hollow grind is too thin for me, and it won't work. I I don't buy that at all. If you're using a DE, and it works effectively with those wafer thin blades, a hollow grind will work well. Also, if it's honed, the key is the edge itself has to be honed well and sharp. And if it is, it will cut. Uh, I think in most cases there might be a few cases where. You know, the, there are use cases that were that are far out of the mainstream that maybe there's a special consideration um, required. But for most people, a good edge is going to cut regardless of grind. However, you may prefer one grind or the other. I prefer hollow. I much prefer hollow. To me, it's just a more enjoyable experience. However, the wedges cut effectively as well. But sometimes people conflate in this hobby want with need and they'll go I need and that actually what they mean is I want so please understand that a good edge is going to cut regardless of grind as long as something is honed well and again you can use a weck blade um, which is very thin and very sharp and sort of <laughs> find that out on your own um, next thing I would like to share with you is when it comes to honing if you asked 100 honing guys a question you'll get probably 75 different answers. <laughs> there is not a lot of established uh, material when it comes to honing where everyone sort of says, oh yeah, that is the case across the board. So what I'm getting at here is watch people who hone their videos, listen to what they have to say, and then ultimately you're gonna have to hone yourself and figure out what works best for you. because. I have folks that I respect a lot in honing and they say 100% different things. So just know that honing is just one of those things you're gonna to have to do. <laughs> and the other thing I would say is, when it comes to honing, to get a shavable edge on a razor is easy, honing. To get a very refined and great edge on a razor is difficult. That takes time and experience and just be mindful of that. It's not much of a challenge to get a shavable edge it is a challenge to get a great refined edge that feels like a laser. That said, it's still not rocket science. You can do it, you can do it. So keep that in mind. The other thing that I would uh, caution you about is when you first start out, try to use both hands. If you're going, if you intend to be able to use both hands, try to start that way. Because if you start using only one hand, and then later you try to work that second hand in, it's going to be difficult. So whatever habits you form when you first start will likely carry over. I can see some hair back there on the neck that I will get when I do my head shave there, but try to start out using both hands if at all possible. That will make it easier down the road. If you do some of the difficult things early and develop that mu muscle memory, it will, it will uh, pay dividends in the end believe me. The next thing I'd like to let you know about is you may not need to do three passes. Some people find with a straight razor, two passes is sufficient. And so keep that in mind. Just, just experiment and see what works best for you. Again, nothing is really written in stone and especially when it comes to honing. So experiment and see what works best. Don't be afraid to try things. But most importantly, Enjoy your experience. That's the most important thing. Then the last thing I'm going to uh, pass on to you before I uh, get into the post shave here is respect the blade. Respect the blade. Respect the blade at all times. I can't tell you the number of very experienced guys that I've seen shaving. Some of them on video, some of them you've seen, some of them they're the most reputable straight razor shavers um, in the community who put their razor down and they go to grab it and cut themselves. I've seen it at least three times in the last six months where very experienced people set their razor down, they go to grab it, it opens up and it cuts them. So always be cognizant of where the working edge of the blade is at all times. If you set it down, uh, wipe the blade clean to dry it off. 
like so. I'm just wiping that off and I will close it. Just close it, set it down. Now, obviously I'm not gonna put it, put it away, but in between passes, wipe it off, set it down. I've seen it time and time again where people grab for one of these and they cut themselves or they drop it and they cut themselves. So always be cognizant of this blade and respect that working edge at all times. All right, that's it for the <laughs> tutorial part or sharing the things that I've learned. Uh, let me rinse and we'll come back and get into the post and give you my finishing thoughts. Stay tuned. And all right, we are back and off cam. We did a warm water rinse to remove the soap. We applied the alum, no stinging. So that was a super smooth, nice straight razor shave. No nicks, cuts, creeper, creepers, weepers, irritation, bubbles, troubles. That was hard to say today. So really, really nice. Following that, we did a cold water rinse and then we dried off with the Lancaster. Then we applied our Thayer's Magic because it's made by witches. I really enjoyed the shave today with Barbas. Again, I only saw one more in stock of these. So I'll put a link below if you're interested. Really nice, classic, clean, fresh sort of scent. We use the Wade and Butcher Gentleman's Juice. You won't see very many of these around. It is a treasured gift for me. And this is the razor that set the hook for me that caused me to, to continue straight razor shaving. Anthony Esposito, if you're a fisherman, you know what setting the hook is. You get a bite and you set that hook. This one set the hook and uh, thank you, Anthony. I appreciate it. I hope these tips were valuable for you. Keep in mind, some of those are just my opinion. So you know, take it with a grain of salt. Uh, the brush today was Wolf Whiskers TSE, the old TSE, that's me, handle. Uh, and we'll finish off today with Barbas Active Splash, which smells just like the soap. For me, a nice, clean, fresh cologne sort of vibe to it. Whoops, poured more than I needed out of there. Let's get it on the hands there, slap it on. And we're gonna be off to the races and having a great day. We had a wonderful shave. Thanks so much for joining me. I really appreciate it. I hope this was helpful to you. Uh, at the end of the video, I'll put up a slide there. That'll be a playlist of tips and tricks and so on. And so hopefully that'll be helpful. Thanks so much. Until next time, I've been your host, CDB, reminding you, it's your shave, do it your way. And as always, God bless.